getting ready to head out to Hamilton, man. Got a, nice. got a little hike to Hammy today. Wow, it's uh, it's going to be a who's who of sports reporters out there. Yeah, I figure McGarry and Minnick will both be there. I mean, who better who better to see this game with than uh, the pros? <laughs> pro. I was just uh, during the break trying to get through some of your article on uh, Josh Samat and Rob McCoy of uh, Holy Spirit and, and Camden Catholic, respectively. Real cool story, man. That must have taken a long time to get all that stuff together. Talk about that story a little bit. Uh, it came together pretty nicely, uh, Sully. Uh, yeah, there's a story here about you know Josh Samat, the great Holy Spirit quarterback, who you know, unbeknownst to him or Rob McCoy Jr., Camden Catholic's quarterback, until about a year and a half ago, they didn't realize that they had actually slept in the same crib together uh, <laughs> in the Bronx as as infants. Um, their fathers were semi-professional football teammates. Uh, and lived together for about a year in the South Bronx. The Monroe Housing Project's a really, uh, a really rough area, and you know they lost touch over the years. So a year and a half ago at a Temple football camp, the fathers recognized each other and kind of like went nuts <laughs> that they actually had reconnected after 14 years of uh, having been estranged. And you know the kids are, are friends now. Obviously, they're not extremely close you know they they live uh they live pretty distant but just a cool story man and and it came together rather quickly um like you said you're trying to get to some of it over the break it's a long story so <laughs> i'm sure it <laughs> no, it's, it's good read though break. definitely a good read for sure oh well thank you sully uh yeah it's always cool when stuff like that kind of happens and and somebody communicates that to you and you can you can put it together now, talk about some of these features a little bit, Mark. That's kind of some. Is that something new this year, where you've kind of been really diving into some in-depth features? Well, it's what I prefer to do the most. I would say, aside from being out there on Friday night, is to find a good story and flesh it out and tell it to its extent. Um, and I think that's our job, really, as as journalists. And um, and any time I can take something and and kind of spend a lot of time on it and research it and, and ask some questions, which is difficult. You know, sometimes you got to maybe spend some of your own time to do it, but that's, I've been doing it more recently because I've been finding some stories kind of worthy of it. And that's what I enjoy doing. Um, and hopefully the readers enjoy it too. Yeah, definitely, man. Good stuff. Let's, let's talk about, uh, Last night's game, Camden, I guess you were at that game with RV. They come back and win 30-24. to 24. Uh, Pretty big shocker for, for RV? Well, I was at Lenape and Cherokee. But oh, I'm sorry. I, I yeah. kinda, oh, it's okay. In a way, I wish I wasn't at <laughs> RV and Camden as good as the uh, Chiefs and Indians game was. Yeah, you know, I saw Camden last week, and we spoke right before I went out to Penn Salkin to cover them. Uh, they were unbelievable. They beat Penn Salkin 40-7. to 7. And, uh, you know, I have not seen this ever in my life. They gave up a 53-yard touchdown run on the second play. And in the middle of the fourth quarter, Pensalkin had 36 total yards. That includes <laughs> the 53-yard touchdown run. Wow. And I'd seen them earlier at Cedar Creek. Uh, Camden has good defense. Now, they gave up 24 points last night, but that's the number one team in Group 5 in South Jersey. Uh, you know, they, they've been really putting together a fine season. I know that you know, there was some other stuff. You know, Dwayne Savage, Camden's coach, he went to RV. His offensive line coach was his coach at RV. Uh, there was a fake spike last year late in the game that I don't think sat too well with some of Camden's players. Uh, Farnham Park's an interesting environment to play, and I think it was kind of a, a perfect storm. But there's not too many teams in Group 2 who can beat uh, a t- upper echelon Group 5 school. I mean, what a win for the high. And talk about Lenape. What does this do for Lenape, that loss by RV? Does that open up um, a better seed for them, maybe? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that it does. I, because I guess you drop your lowest game anyway. Um, oh, okay, right. I think Lenape is going to host a home game or host a game after the way last night transpired. And I think they have a real shot to do some damage if they can continue to get the ball to JoJo Kellum, their running back. Um, Group 5 is so much about the matchups. 
and and it's so much about who's hot, who's not. You know, I, I but I think Lenape certainly has a chance. I, I I think they. I mean, they only lost to RV by three points, so that game was very close and could have gone either way. It was kind of a rock fight, so I don't think they necessarily think there's a, a dent in RV's armor. I think they probably felt they could hang with them all along should they see them again in the playoffs. Now, Mark, what do you make of the Chiefs of, of Cherokee? I think we kind of thought maybe they were a rung below RV and Lenape uh, at, in the start of the season, but they're obviously proven they can hang with these type of teams. Well, P.J. Megan is one of the best coaches in South Jersey, and that's not up for debate. Uh, he Offensively, they find ways to score points, even against a very good team last night. They, they still put 14 on the board. When it really looked like they weren't ever going to get to double digits for a period of time there, they went down and scored quickly to make it a game late. Um, they're very good. They're always very good. I, I think they aren't quite at that Violin Millville uh, level, RV Lenape level, but they can beat any of those teams on any night because simply they have the coaching, they have good quarterback in Jack Walters, uh, that can make some big plays. I like their running back, this Bard kid who's a sophomore. They have big wide receivers who can who know their routes. They're efficient offensively. Um, Cherokee is never out of it, and this year is no different. Talking Mark Tribble of the Courier Post. And, Mark, man, when the playoffs roll around, South Jersey Group 5 is just going to be an absolute slugfest. I mean, you're talking about four or five teams that can maybe win almost any sectional in the state. Yeah, I would agree with that, Sully. It is certainly, um, it's certainly going to sell a lot of tickets. Uh, you look at these teams: How Williamstown, the the four the four or five we already mentioned. Um, you know, whoever gets a home game, it doesn't even really matter in some cases because the road team is not going to be intimidated by going uh, on the buses. I think you look at a team like Vineland, who probably play road games throughout the playoffs should they advance. Similar to Millville last year. That's what Millville did to get there and win it. I think Millville was under the radar last year for us in terms of that playoff run, but certainly not this year. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night, and uh, that is certainly true in five. But you know what? We found out now we have some depth in some of our other uh, groups also. That you know, I mean, you look at group two. Cinnamons and beat West Stefford last night 21-7. to Camden looks like the team to beat. Uh, Haddonfield and Cedar Creek will play today. We'll learn more about those teams. Uh, Willingboro has been hot. So that's the best part about this time of year, man, is we've seen who, who's proven they can win some games, but let's see them do it on the biggest stage. Yeah, Camden might not even get the top seed and it might be considered the team to beat in that, in that uh, sectional. Well, I think they probably will end up the top seed. I don't, I'm not a mathematician. I'm, no, you know, <laughs> I'm not a genius, but um, – I think they will end up the top seed. They play Winslow next week, and I think Winslow's group four. If they beat them, they probably would be because of the power point multiplier. Um, I mean, RV had so many points. Plus, they went up three groups to beat them. So, I'm no miracle worker, but I would think that if they're not the top seed, they're going to be pretty darn close. Yep. And, uh, Mark, real quick before we let you go, I know Kevin's high on the Delsey Crusaders and what do you make of this team who, who uh, had to forfeit that game against Cedar Creek early in the year, and it kind of seems like that's energized this team, and they just, uh, you know, really took it to Woodrow Wilson last night, 43-12. to Yeah, Delsey is always very good. With Mark Deal, they're coaching the triple option this year. He's been at Clearview in the past, uh, Gateway, Audubon. I mean, not, I'm sorry, not Audubon, Maple Shade. He's, uh, he knows that system inside and out. There is a learning process for that. Their offense has been good all season. Could the defense hold up? Uh, this against an offense in Woodrow Wilson who can really sling the ball around. For them to be able to do that, you know, that's the only thing anybody was waiting on from Delsey was the defense. And I think they proved last night their defense can be pretty tough. Certainly, I'm sure they were tired of hearing about Wilson and wanted to prove that they were the team to reckon with in terms of Group 3 when it comes down to it. I mean, certainly Timber Creek's number one, but I think we've been waiting to see if Wilson or Delsey would be that other team, and Delsey certainly staked a claim to it last night, Sully. 
Good stuff, as always, Mark. Uh, up against the break, got to let you go, but we appreciate it, as always. Enjoy the game today, and we'll catch up with you next week, buddy. Thanks, Sully. Always a pleasure, man. All right, man. Have a great weekend. You too. That was Mark Tribble of the Courier Post.